What is up, everybody? Welcome back to Collected Beard Reactions. This go around, we'll be taking a look at Gurkha World War II. Uh, this is from the channel Simple Histories. They've got tons of awesome content. Um, yeah, th just figured I'd look at something I hadn't seen before. So, yeah. Before we go any further, like, subscribe, notification bell. Let's go ahead and get into it. Gurkha World War II. As soon as the British declared war on Germany in 1939, they immediately started mobilizing troops from the Commonwealth. Men from all over the empire joined the British forces to contribute to the fight. Among them were the Gurkhas. Before the Second World War, the Gurkhas were in service of the British Army for more than a century, fighting in all corners of the world for the British Empire. Once enemies during the Anglo-Nepalese War from 1814 to 1816, the British found a mutual respect for the fighting abilities of the Gurkhas, and large numbers volunteered for the British Army afterwards. So that says a lot about the uh, fighting prowess then, because to take and actually gain the respect of the most powerful empire at the time, and uh, yeah, that's that's pretty freaking stout. That means you you definitely accomplished something. Um, for the fighting abilities of the Gurkhas, and large numbers volunteered for the British Army afterwards. They came from the Kingdom of Nepal, a small country in the southern slopes of the Himalayas, working as farmers and shepherds. Life in such a rough environment made them into tough soldiers, who never questioned orders and did not see retreat as an option. Their motto was, better to die than be a coward. So these weren't your everyday run-of-the-mill people. These were like hardened by life and then being being part of the military, being a being a Gurkha as well. Just it just carried over. So that's the type of thing that it seemed to be a, a, a creed for uh, certain certain civilizations or certain people back back in the day. And for that have that mindset, better die than being a coward means they toughest fighting force you're going to go against Street is an option their motto was better to die than be a coward being among the finest soldiers in the entire empire the british army recruited gurkhas whenever reliable manpower was required among the gurkhas were several tribes that are considered more warrior-like than the others but in times of war men from other less martial tribes were being recruited as well during the war, nearly 250,000 Gurkhas were recruited by the British in more than 40 battalions, in addition to the eight battalions of Nepalese army that also entered the war on the side of the Allies. Be Just real quick, and I hate to take and pause it this much, but that massive a size of a force to take and join with that kind of mindset, that's, that's not somebody, that's not a force you want to go against. Um, and the fact there's so, that was so, that's so many, so many, that's, man, that is incredible. Being a part of the British Indian Army in the first years of the war, the Gurkhas were deployed to the British Middle East territories, such as Iraq and Syria, and to Northern Africa, where they fought against the Axis forces. It was after December 9th, when the United Kingdom declared war on Japan, that the Indian Army and Gurkhas were engaged on a higher scale, primarily to protect Malaya from the Japanese forces. They would go on to fight in Italy, Greece, Singapore, India, and Burma. Even though the Gurkhas had a special reputation in the British Army, they were not organized as a separate formation. Battalions of Gurkha regiments were deployed to regular units of the army. Being a part of the Indian Army, which was under British command, Gurkhas wore the typical dress, the M37 khaki drill uniform with Bombay bloomers, long leg trousers that could be buttoned up to become shorts. They also carried the standard 1937 pattern web equipment. By the end of the war, this uniform was replaced with a more practical olive green battle dress for jungle warfare. Gurkha soldiers that were deployed to Africa and later engaged in Italy wore the distinctive British uniform for these campaigns. What was distinctive for the Gurkha uniform was their slouch hat, the trademark of the Gurkhas since the beginning of the 20th century. When not wearing the standard steel helmet, Gurkhas wore their Tarai hats, which were actually made of two hats sewn together to make them more rigid. Hats were wrapped with a light puggery and were worn tilted to the right side. Being incorporated in army units, Gurkhas were equipped with standard British weapons such as the Lee Enfield No. 4 rifle and Bren light machine gun, 
and American weapons such as the Thompson M1928 and M1A1 submachine guns. However, each Gurkha carried a close combat weapon of his own, a weapon that was distinctive to his Himalayan nation. More famous than their Tarai hats were their Kukri knives. Kukris were the Gurkha's favorite close combat weapon and were carried in almost every assault. On numerous occasions, Gurkhas attacked the enemy with a rifle in one hand and a Kukri in the other. Could you imagine seeing that coming at you? I mean, that's a, that's a chopping knife right there. Like, out in, I'm sure in Nepal, that knife is used to take and cut vines, take and cut trees, cut rope and stuff like that for whatever task they're performing. I'm sure they use it to take and cut all kind of, like, take and help whenever they're farming or whatever. Like, that's, that's a, uh, yeah. That'd be terrifying, especially if you had to go hand to hand. You're, it, that's a wrap, cause that's it. There's no two ways about it. it. That's it. It's a wrap. And for them to take and have such a fighting spirit and be such warriors, like that's, I'd, have, I'd have hated to been on the other side of that. Kukris were designed to be cutting knives. Their length varying from 16 to 18 inches. They are distinctive for their forward curving blade, which is sharp only on the lower concave side. A legend goes that the shape of the blade resembles the shape of Nepal. Gurkhas were very skillful with their kukris and were known to have inflicted severe damage in close combat on the enemy by using only these knives. Because of this, kukris gained an almost mythical status with many stories told about them. One of the most famous kukri legends was that a Gurkha has to spill blood every time he took out his Kukri from its scabbard. Therefore, if a Gurkha took out his Kukri just to show it to someone, he would have had to cut at least his thumb in order to respect the tradition. The Gurkhas... It's a heck of a tradition, if that were the case, but that's... Coming from different tribes and, and clans and stuff like that within from within Nepal to take and make up that fighting force like to take and still have that the tradition it just gracious day in the morning it's proved to be fearless and ruthless warriors in combat they never questioned orders and always fought vigorously no matter how strong the opponent or how important the battle their attack was always followed by the battle cry io gorkali meaning the gurkhas are upon you 12 Gurkhas were awarded the Victoria Cross for gallantry against the enemy during the war. More than 43,000 Gurkhas lost their lives fighting alongside the British Army during World War II. 250,000, not including the regular regiments or army. 250,000 Gurkhas. 43,000. That's, that's a heavy toll. And in contrast, though, like that's that shows the fighting spirit they had because that's still over 200,000 that went back. That is you didn't see numbers like that in World War Two for a lot of for a lot of countries or for a lot of uh, regiments and different things like that. A lot of them are just. It's just that's crazy. That that right there is a testament to their fighting ability. <clears throat> There we have it, Gurkha, World War II. That was interesting. That was hecka interesting. I might take a look at more stuff based on the Gurkha. I just find it absolutely fascinating. Um, the fact that they come from Nepal, they they took and fought against, tried, you know, they fought against the British, but were so respected. Their fighting ability was so respected. They actually, British are like, yeah, you want to, you know, join up with us? You want to fight with us? I mean, that's, to have the the largest empire be like, so yeah, we didn't like fighting you very much. You want to fight with us instead of against us next time? Like that says a lot. It says a whole heck of a lot. So that's pretty cool. Um, and, and just yeah, man, that's so neat. Um, y'all be good to each other. Love yourselves. Peace.